you know, <clears throat> I love how we try to change the narrative. Usually I accuse LeBron James from that. Now I know he gets it from. He gets it from you. Look Thank you, sir. I've been saying that for the longest time, that LeBron James has strategically placed plants in the liberal sports media to dispense excuses for him. And they almost have a symbiotic relationship. They feed off of him and he feeds off of them. He understands that they will make excuses for him. And he also understands that the excuses that he comes up with or his team comes up with for him, they will be dispensed through the liberal sports media faithfully. So thankfully, Stephen A. Smith is finally starting to figure that out. Let me tell you something. It's unbelievable how we put a... Um, we asked the question about LeBron James getting swept now. Yeah. I didn't know we get to bring up what happened two years ago. My bad. I'm sorry. I didn't know. I, I'm so far being for me to think that we were talking about that. I didn't know. I mean, did anybody deny that he won a championship two years ago? Has anybody denied that he's the best player in the world? But when you talk about those great guys getting swept... Well, let's analyze this because we are talking basketball here, right? So when you talk about basketball and you talk about somebody like Shaquille O'Neal, does Shaquille O'Neal dribble the ball 94 feet? Did Shaquille O'Neal, was he a point guard? Was he somebody that ran your team? And here I said, wait, wait, I, I, I let... Stephen A. Smith, I understand your points, bro. But that's not the hill that you want to die on. You don't want to die on that hill that Shaq got swept and it's okay because he's a center. Especially due to the fact that in the era that he played, the game was much more geared towards empowering the center and working from the inside out than it is today. So that's not the hill that you want to die on. In regards to that point, you just want to acquiesce it and say, well, Shaq was playing far earlier in his career. I would compare that to LeBron James getting swept in 2007. But LeBron should not have been swept right now, not after 15 years of experience. That is when his leadership is supposed to shine through. In game one, he failed in that capacity at the end of regulation and took away his team's chance of maybe rebounding in overtime and winning that game. That's the tack that you want to take. When we start talking about Shaq being a center, I understand what you're trying to say, but in that era, teams worked through the center. And the fact of the matter is that Shaq got thoroughly outplayed by Hakeem Olajuwon in those finals. There's no doubt about that. You see. In his prime. Zip it. In his prime. Your turn was. I didn't interrupt you at all. Go ahead. Here's the deal. Shaquille O'Neal is a center. All right? Shaquille O'Neal got obliterated by the Houston Rockets, led by Akeem the Dream or Olajuwon. He was a puppy in the league at that particular moment in time. Incredibly young, not in his 15th year. We bring up Magic Johnson. Not only did it happen against Moses Malone and the crew, but I recall Kareem Abdul-Jabbar getting hurt in that series. We forget that, okay? No, sir. That's not the series that Kareem got hurt. In 1983, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar played in all four games. Maybe you're thinking of the 1980 finals. That's the finals where Kareem got hurt. In 1983, Magic played in all four games. Kareem played in all four games. They just got swept by the better team. The 1983 76ers are one of the greatest teams of all time. They had Moses Malone. They had Dr. J. They had Andrew Toney. They had Bobby Jones. They had Maurice Cheeks, etc. I believe all five players average in double figures in those finals. And let me say this once again, because I have Moses Malone above Kobe Bryant on my all-time greatest NBA players list. For those of you who don't know who Moses Malone was, he had 11 consecutive seasons of 20 and 10. 11 consecutive seasons. And had one season where he averaged something like 31 points and 15 rebounds. Average. Okay. 11 consecutive seasons of 20 and 10. Moses Malone did. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. When we talk about the game itself. And, and he thoroughly dominated Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in that series. In today's generation, we're talking about a game that's been softened religiously. Anybody, maybe because you're a puppy, because after all, you were born after Will Chamberlain and not before. Maybe, maybe you forgot that. Maybe the analytics dudes didn't inform you about that. And I don't understand how you oh. win the test with them Beetlejuice ideas. I just don't understand it. Okay, but the bottom line is clearly you have missed something. Because when we talk about the game today, as soft as it is, you can get a you can get a foul for having bad breath. I mean, this is ridiculous in the NBA. The the dude that is the best in the world. That 6'9", 270 plus, 
can play inside or out, can does dribble the ball 94 feet, does control tempo, does hold the game in his hands. Not only can't give you a game, but with a team that he formulated, with a team that he that's constructed. On, that's, that's a far better point, Stephen A. Smith. Once again, LeBron James is basically the general manager of that squad. And he was willing to totally give up on the season until they obliterated the current roster that they had right around the time of the trade deadline and brought in those young pups. That's on him. But that's all I'm saying. Okay, now let me get, let me get into the, your entire argument here. Sure. What you demonstrated about Magic and about Shaq is there are extenuating circumstances. Meaning, someone gets swept. That's the headline. Now, what are the details? You, because you remember, this is your business, and you were a fan, I'm sure, before it was your business, obviously. That's why, you know, anyone who has passion for it has a passion for it. Just say it. That's why I'm as great as I am. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Sometimes, folks, if you don't toot your own horn, there's no music. The point is... The we point still is, are on one today. You are going into the reasons why Shaq got swept. Like, I don't care what position you play. If you're one of the greatest of all time, and you got Penny Hardaway in his prime, not to mention a really almost a perfect supporting cast in their starting five, like those role players were just right, Horace Grant and Dennis Scott and Anderson and those guys. You have all that, you got swept. You're pointing out, he was young, he doesn't handle the ball, etc. Okay, Magic. I agree with you though, Max Kellerman. The Orlando Magic, they have way too much talent on that team that have been swept. So it's difficult, in my view, for Stephen A. Smith to try to argue in Shaq's favor by saying, well, he was a center. That team had way too much talent. Penny Hardaway is one of the great players that never was because of his injuries, unfortunately. Magic Johnson got swept. Kareem got hurt. Matter of fact, when Jordan beat Magic in the first finals, Worthy got hurt. There are extenuating circumstances. But they were, but, but Let me... Worthy and Magic were both old, too. Well, uh, okay. uh, no, they were not. And that's one of the biggest myths that gets perpetuated about Jordan's rise to prominence. That Magic and Worthy were old, that Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumars were old. Isaiah Thomas was 30 years old when the Detroit Pistons got swept. Joe Dumars was 28. Dennis Rodman was 28. In the finals, Magic Johnson was 31. Please keep in mind that Michael Jordan played on the same college team as James Worthy. Okay? James Worthy was probably about 31 years old when they lost in the finals to the Bulls. And no one says, well, the reason why the Detroit Pistons won their first championship in 89 was because Magic Johnson and Byron Scott went down with hamstrings. Nobody says that. Okay, older, they were still great they players. Were, they were old Look, at that time. And Magic at that no, sir. Magic Johnson finished second in MVP voting in 1991. He finished first in MVP voting the year before in 1990. He was still a transcendent player and was actually able to lead a team to the finals, the LA Lakers in 1991, without Kareem, with Vlade Divac at center, and with Mike Dunleavy as coach, utilizing a new style of play. They were no longer a fast break team. They executed in the half court, and Magic Johnson was still able to get them to the finals. That MVP caliber player still. The point is this. You're even saying that, though. You're bringing up circumstances. So let me tell you this. LeBron's old at the time. LeBron has no business being the best player in the world 15 years into his career. He well, it depends on what's in his bloodstream, allegedly. He's old. And not only that, he doesn't have any with him, anyone with him. That may be his fault. That's not true. He has Kevin Love. Kevin Love is a future Hall of Famer. He has a point guard in George Hill who was able to lead a whole other team to the Eastern Conference Finals just a couple of years ago. He has a player in Rodney Hood, who in the Western Conference was averaging 17 points a game. He had help. He just has to use it. But not only that, just as Magic, you mentioned this, was going up against the Moses Malone Sixers. Moses might have been better than Magic and Bird at that time, and he joined... joined Moses Malone won three MVPs in the early 1980s. So one can certainly make a case that Moses Malone if not the best player in the NBA during that time, was the most dominant. Won three MVPs. Once again, for people who get upset when I rank him above Kobe Bryant, you need to learn about the history of the game. Dr. J and them made a super team. We're like, all right, Magic, you ain't got Kareem, and you're going up against Moses and them. You got swept. No big deal. We get it. All right, LeBron, you don't really have anyone on the team. And a 73 win team with Steph Curry, Draymond Green, and Klay Thompson, and Andre Iguodala, and a great system. Two of them who didn't show up in game three. Added two of them who didn't show up in game three. Added Kevin. We're not talking Man. about the series. Right, guys, we're we're talking about on one game. I mean, damn. What, the, what more does he need? One game? What one, does he need? One game. 
about one, one all-star game, teammate? One game, one all-star. One game. Listen, either you're going to win it or you're not. We can't sit up here and say you could have had game one, but then ignore the fact that you didn't get it. You can't sit up there and say if we could have we could have had game three and didn't get it, but then make an excuse for that too. Damn it! If it was anybody else, if we are going to hold them accountable, I'm not talking about the series. None of us have picked, none of us picked them to win. One game, right? This is basketball. Oh, basically. One game. That's oh, who in here doesn't know basketball? Who doesn't know that one player can't get you one game? Molly Karam and Max Kellerman should have goggles whenever Stephen A. Smith starts to go apoplectic like this. Who doesn't know that? It's against, Nick Floyd. Why couldn't Magic get it? Why couldn't Magic get it against the Sixers? Because he wasn't as good as LeBron. Oh. oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when people talk for so long and get so upset that they forget exactly where they're at. They end up saying something that they probably wish that they didn't say. Exactly. Wait a minute. It's not exact. You see that? <laughs> Stephen A. Smith just realized he done fucked up. Yo, wait a minute. I don't really think that. Well, maybe I do. Uh, let's go to commercial. Part in the movie where the lawyer goes, I rest my case. No, it's not. That's a few good men. No, it's not. That was a few good men. He got Stephen A. Smith to turn into Colonel Jessup. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Guys, can we move on? Are we Patrick good? Dawson was a great can leader. He on? was not the talent that okay. LeBron James is. I, right, I, I agree. To get one. Steve is still upset that he had a Freudian slip and said LeBron is better than Magic Johnson. He wish he can go back in time. The fact that the matter is that I have Magic Johnson higher on my list than I have LeBron James, but LeBron James is just a freakishly gifted athlete. So he's more athletically gifted than Magic Johnson, physically. Mentally, no one has ever been more gifted than Magic Johnson. Be listen, because they're extenuating circumstances. It's not what extenuating circumstances. If that's the case, they wouldn't have been able to visit to the game one or three. Who's, they didn't get Who's it. greater than LeBron they didn't in the history get it. of basketball? Excuse me? Who's greater than LeBron in the history of basketball? Michael Jordan, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bill Russell, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird. Jordan. That's it. We're on the same page. LeBron's ahead of everyone else. Every no, sir. Everyone else said maybe Kareem. How much more? How, you want him to be better than Jordan? Okay, he's not. It's what not do you about do? being better than Jordan. It's about getting one game. He got you a game, Stephen A. He got I'm sorry. I thought the series was 3-0. Why the hell are like you putting on? Why are your game. bags packed and you going home today? Why? Because you don't have a game. <laughs> Stephen A., you were not supposed to say that on television. You're going off script. How dare you? Ha, I resign. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Tough trick. Look at Max Kellerman. He's embarrassed. Steve, you're ruining my image. Transition for me here. Cleveland, don't get mad at me. Stay mad at them. They think the Warriors are about to win their third chip in four years. And, uh, yeah. On the brink of the dynasty, and I got bad news. Rachel Nichols just reported KD telling her that he's going to stay and re-sign there this summer. Stephen A., how big? Well, we'll see. But anyway, I just thought that this was a very interesting conversation in regards to how getting swept particularly this late in his career, could affect how LeBron James is viewed when his career is appraised in hindsight. And it's also very, <laughs> very hilarious that Max Kellerman was able to get Stephen A. Smith to commit that Freudian slip of saying that LeBron James is better than Magic Johnson, a Freudian slip that you could tell Stephen A. Smith was very upset with himself about. And looks like he's still upset with himself about it, but it is what it is. Peace.